Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a T518, which is an Android TV stick. It has an HDMI connector at one end, USB, micro USB, uh, micro SD card slot, and a built-in antenna. And it uh, ships with Google Android. It has a rock chip uh, RK3188 quad-core processor. It's a pretty fast device, but if you're not a big fan of running Android apps on your TV, you can also run uh, Linux. There's a new version of Picuntu, or uh, Pic... I'm not even really sure how you pronounce it, but it's basically a version of Ubuntu designed to run on this sort of device. And so let's go ahead and turn on a monitor, plug it into HDMI, and hook up power, and plug in a keyboard and mouse. There's a relatively new installer that came out that makes it uh, much easier than ever to install uh, Ubuntu Linux. It's uh, kind of just a couple of click process using a Windows PC. Uh, it can be a little bit difficult sometimes getting your device into bootloader mode. It uh, took me many tries to figure out how to get it to work with the T518. I'm not sure I could even tell you how I finally got it. Uh, if you have an MK8024 that's officially supported, uh, it can take a moment here to boot, but uh, it's going through a lot of processes. And it sort of sticks here for a second because I've uh, not had a lot of luck getting it to connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, if you have an MK8024 or another device that's officially supported by the developers, you're probably going to get more things working. Hardware accelerated video still isn't working, there's still a couple of other things to work on, but overall the experience is um, surprisingly good considering these are little TV sticks that you can buy for $70, $80 or less. So we've got here a uh, full version of Ubuntu Linux basically running on the XFCE uh, desktop environment. It's a fairly lightweight environment. Uh, it's not, not sure everything's loaded just yet. Here we go. So uh, as I've mentioned, I've been having difficulty getting Wi-Fi to work. Let's go ahead and just sort of keep that up in the side and see if it wants to connect. Uh, in the meantime, let's take a look and see some of the other things. We've got a uh, file browser here. Mail reader, terminal emulator. So you can see that works the way it should. Uh, again, doesn't look like we're getting any wireless here, and it might just be because my particular device is not fully supported. Um, but if you had say some audio files or video files. Uh, you can see that we've got some media uh, playback software here, uh, built-in graphics software including an image viewer, and no real problems with uh, running multiple applications at once. It looks pretty zippy here. Now of course I'm not doing a lot of work with these applications right now, but it's nice to know that they uh, that everything's sort of so responsive when you get started. So. Doesn't look like it comes preloaded with anything like uh, LibreOffice or um, OpenOffice or even Abbey Word. Uh, there is LeafPad here, which is a uh, text editor. Midnight Commander file browser, sort of a classic uh, dual screen browser there. Gunnar for uh, something a little bit nicer looking. You can set your menu options. LX terminal. And 
archive application. So, uh, pretty basic stuff out of the box. Uh, it does have the Synaptic Package Manager, which make installing additional packages pretty easy, assuming that you actually have an active internet connection, which I do not. And, uh, so that's not going to load properly, and it sort of seems to be hanging. But in terms of just sort of getting a quick look at how things respond, I'm pretty impressed with um, how much it feels just like a full-fledged computer with a much faster processor, or a more traditional processor, an x86 chip from Intel or AMD or something. So, this is running on an ARM Cortex A9 quad-core CPU, um, but it uh, has the basic functionality of a full-fledged uh, Linux computer. The big problem here, of course, is the fact that without internet, I'm going to have a hard time installing applications. We can't get online, we can't surf the web, we can't do internet video, or really most of the things that people would want to do with a computer these days. Um, but it's still pretty impressive, and um, I uh, look forward to trying it on another device that might actually have working Wi-Fi. I just wanted to give you a quick look at how it functions. And again, the install process, if you can get your uh, Android TV stick or uh, ARM-based TV stick, perhaps I should say, into bootloader mode, the install process is really pretty painless these days. It just takes a couple of minutes and uh, checking a couple of boxes. Now it does erase all of the data on your device, so if you want to restore from the uh, original settings, you're going to need a, um, a factory image or a custom ROM that you can load on it. So right now, the only way to get Android up and running on this again would be to go ahead and uh, and replace the Ubuntu Linux operating system with Android, but uh, it's not that hard to do once you um, get to the point where you know how to boot into the bootloader. So again, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a quick look at Ubuntu running on the T518 and it should run as well on other devices with the, uh, the same chipset, the RK3188 chipset.